So everyone knows what the role of a support is, right? You know, they stack, pull, gank, ward, sometimes counter ward, and of course, feed. Well, all right, I guess that isn't too accurate, but that seems to be how a lot of people view supporting. So then what is the purpose of having a support on your team anyway? It's pretty simple, actually. Just think about what the word support means in everyday English. When you support someone, you're helping them to do something, right? So what do supports in Heroes New Earth do? Well, they help the other players on the team do whatever their roles are. Think about it. Supports help their carries farm, their gankers gank, their junglers push and do their role, and they help the suicides feel better about themselves because there's someone on the team with even less farm than them. All supports focus on assisting the other players on their team, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. Supports can be thrown into any lane setup and many different team compositions. Two different supports might play completely different and focus on totally different items and tasks. Now, I could go on about this forever. I want to keep this video short though, so I'm just going to go over what you have to do as a short lane support babysitting a carry. Okay, so you're on Legion. You just picked your favorite support hero, and you're ready to go bottom lane and wreck people. That's fine. Just buy your standard mana, health potions, blight runes, wards, minor totems, and get out the... Wait a second. First of all, you should be giving at least one ward to whoever is going long lane so they can ward the enemy pull or protect themselves. But second, and more important, who are you going to be laning against? Think about what items you're going to need to do your job in the lane. I mean, I see, I, I see people do this all the time. They'll be going against a melee suicide and walk into lane with a health pot and two stacks of runes of blight and minor totems and mana potions. Like, they're, they're ready for a war zone. Five minutes later, the potion remains unused, five rune stacks left, no mana potions used. You know, that's just gold down the drain that you could have used earlier for things like an early flying courier, a counter ward to let you pull. These things make a huge difference. Now, decide what items you're going to need and get to lane as quickly as possible. There's no reason to stall on your base. Now, when you get there, position yourself more aggressively. This is before the creep spawn. Position yourself more aggressively the stronger you think your lane is compared to their lane. And make sure you get your wards down. First priority, figure out who's in your lane. If this means dropping an early ward, then do it. Like right here. I mean, I know they're going to do some crazy dual lane shenanigans bottom, so I'm just going to put a ward there, make sure they don't go through the back entrance. We've been checking out the front entrance this entire time. And oh, look, it's a pyromancer. Here, c come here, Swiftblade. And he's like, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And we're just going to we're just gonna kill the pyromancer. Just because I put the ward there. You just got to scout them and route them. You have wards for a reason. Let's get some continuity here. So this is the same game, the same pyro. Second priority, counter the pull. Alright, so, you know, you just got to keep an eye out. I see Pyro, she's going to ward there. I don't even need to bring the courier over because she just warded behind the trees. And, I mean, there you go. I'm going to get 50 gold back and now I can pull. Not hard. Everyone knows that you prioritize your carry's farm first. Do whatever it takes to make life easy for your carry. Box the enemy out, stack, pull, do whatever is prudent at the time to ensure your carry isn't having his farm impacted negatively. Remember though, sometimes you have to look ahead a little bit. If the lane is pushed up, a lot of times it's best for you to abandon your lane for a bit and go pull. You have been stacking your pull, haven't you? Sure, your carry will miss some creeps, but your pull will get the wave back to your tower and help your lane out a lot in the long run. More on that later though. Most people get that you have to prioritize your carry's gold, but a lot of supports forget that they need to prioritize their carry's experience gain as well. If you can control the lane from outside of experience range, then do it! 
Your carry needs levels more than you do. I know what a lot of you are thinking, well what do I do then? Do I just stay level 1 at 69 GPM for the whole laning phase? I see some supports do this too. No! Now that you're just going to be useless if you do that. That's why I stress countering your pull so much earlier. That's how you're going to get your necessary early game farm. One pull will bring you from level 1, zero experience, straight to level 3 and can net you 300 gold or even more. That's huge! Now I could go on for another 10 minutes about how to pull, but I'm not going to do that. Maybe in another video. Just uh, practice less hitting every single creep, make sure you only pull when the wave is triple stacked, and make sure you deny your entire creep wave every time you pull. Uh, just some basic things. Try to do that every time. Make sure you camp or deny runes from the other team whenever you can. You know, pay attention to your even minute marks. This is especially important ever since refreshment runes came out. Be careful though. Make sure you aren't throwing yourself into death because the other team could be trying to get the rune spawn too and they probably will be, so make sure you watch your minimap. Finally, look for opportunities to gank or help out other lanes. Remember, your job is to help the whole team, not just your carry. Sure, your carry takes priority, but don't forget about the rest of the game going on in other parts of the map. At the very least, make sure you have a TP on you as early as possible. Alright, so that was a lot about laning. Playing the rest of the game is way less technical, and I'm running out of time, so I'll just briefly go over it. You can go on forever about topics like warding, so I'll save the nitty gritty details for another video. There are some key things you need to know though, so let's talk about what you should be doing mid to late game. When it comes to warding, do it effectively and often. You should be warding throughout the entire game. A lot of supports slack off on wards, early game especially, before 15 minutes. This is one of the most important times to be warding though, so don't forget it. A simple way of putting it is to just make sure you keep the ward count in the shop down. Placing a lot of wards isn't necessarily useful though. Make sure you're placing good wards. Stop and put yourself in the shoes of your teammates. Now this is a trick that I used to use to ward a lot. So put yourself in the shoes of your teammates. If you were your carry, where would you want to ward? If you were mid, where would you want to ward? If you were jungle, where would you want to ward? Consider all of these and all of your teammates and set your priorities. Usually carry first, mid second, and go from there. After you've given it that type of thought, place your ward. Oh, and also, if nothing else, make sure you have some Congo vision in the river mid to late game. It's pretty important. Now, you might have the lowest farm priority on your team, but that doesn't mean you should never farm. You should not be clocking in at 90 gold per minute. That's just unacceptable. You know that Glacius with Striders and a Bracer 20 minutes in? Yeah, completely useless. In fact, as a side note, never get Striders. Just leave them as ordinary boots. You don't need the upgrade. Just get Steam Boots when you can. The fact is, you need items too. Maybe you don't need much, but if you have some spare time, farm the easy camp. Farm some spare lane creeps that nobody's farming. Sure, don't steal farm from your mid or carry, but trust me, you'll be a lot more useful with steam boots, power supply, astrolabe 20 to 25 minutes into the game rather than if you had bare striders. And that's with warding. Finally, you have to be active in team fights. Now, different supports have different sweet spots where they're most effective in fights, you know, either closer up or further back. You'll figure that out on your own as you try different heroes. In general though, stay as far back as possible. Your spells probably have decent range, so take advantage of that. Hide behind trees and use the fog to your advantage. Focus on getting all of your spells off on good targets. Get off as good of an ult as possible and really make an impact. Just because your support doesn't mean you're supposed to be dead weight during a fight. Now there are all kinds of things I could go into, and all sorts of topics I could go into a lot deeper than I have. They deserve their own videos though. Tell me what you want to see in another video, either on the forums or by commenting below. Also, be sure to thumbs up if you enjoyed, and most importantly, thanks for watching.